You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela, episode number 76. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food, and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. How are you, Marshall? I'm so excited that we're here together this week. I know. Hi, everybody. Yeah. All right. So this week, we wanted to talk about something that happens to us all the time in the weight loss journey, and that is the dreaded weight regain. And what happens is our patients will come into us and they're feeling so ashamed and they're asking themselves, how the hell did this happen? And that's why we titled the podcast, How in the Hell Did This Happen? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm asking myself right now. I know that. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, they'll say, I thought I had it under control. I was doing so well. And now I've gained a bunch back and it feels so hard to get back on track again. This is what we hear all the time. It is. So, it is so hard. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling with it right now. In the last year, mm-hmm. I've been really, really struggling. So- yeah. I can really, really relate to anybody that is mm-hmm. struggling with this. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough disease. And um, I'm going to explain a little bit about what's going on. So a lot of times this happens after a vacation, which my recollection, Marshall, is that everything was going fine until you went off on vacation and then things kind of... Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. When I went to Mexico, right. and things have not been the same. <laughs> right. That was last year. We hear this very frequently that people, they go on vacation and they allow themselves some treats and then they come back and it's like everything's gone to hell in a (laughs) handbasket. It's just like, it's so hard to get back on track. So sometimes it happens after the holidays. Sometimes it happens after something happens in life. Like for example, just this last week, I saw a woman whose mother had died last year in November And that plunged her into a really deep depression. And she was like, I didn't even care what I ate or drank. I couldn't have cared less. She was just grieving all winter and all spring. And she quit caring about her health at all. And she said, you know, finally this summer, she's starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel and she's kind of pulling herself out and calling us and making an appointment was one of her ways of helping to pull herself out of the grief stricken misery, you know? And so there's all kinds of things that can happen. Like sometimes it's stress at work. Sometimes you're going through a separation or a divorce uh, or the illness of someone that you care about. And then of course, COVID. People are still struggling with the effects of COVID, even though things are starting to feel normal. It still isn't quite normal yet. So lots of things can happen. And I just want you, our listener, to know that there are a variety of reasons of why this can happen to you. And I want to let you know, first off, that there's no reason to beat yourself up about it. I know it's hard not to beat yourself up because our primitive brains just love to beat us up, (laughs) but I want Mm -hmm. you to not listen to your primitive brain and try not to allow yourself to beat yourself up because you really haven't done anything wrong, okay? Nothing wrong has happened. So the first thing that I want all of us to understand There's several things that I want us to understand, but the first thing I want us to understand is that obesity is a disease. So a lot of people think that obesity is a character flaw. If I just had more willpower, if I just ate better, whatever, name it, whatever, then I wouldn't have this weight problem. And that's kind of what the diet industry teaches us is that this is all our fault. And so I want you to understand that obesity is a disease. Now, It's not a disease like pneumonia that you get it and then it's cured. It's actually not curable. It's chronic and it's progressive and it's relapsing. So I want to explain what I mean by that. Chronic means that it's not acute. In other words, you can't just treat it and have it go away. Chronic means it's always there. Progressive means it gets worse over time if left untreated. And relapsing means that you you can get it under control, but it can come back. And so you'll have periods of time where it gets out of control. So it's relapsing. Okay? 
So you want to think about obesity in the same way you think about hypertension, because that's another chronic, progressive, relapsing, fatal, potentially fatal disease if it's out of control, right? And so there are some things that you need to do if you've got hypertension, high blood pressure, to get your blood pressure under control, or you're going to die an early death. And that's just the nature of hypertension, okay? So the same thing is true with obesity. It's a chronic, progressive, relapsing disease. It doesn't go away, but you can get it under such good control that you don't have the weight gain and you don't have any of the symptoms of it, okay? So that's our goal here, is to get this chronic, progressive, relapsing disease under control. Now, let's say you had hypertension, high blood pressure, and something happened in your life, like your mother died or somebody that you loved got sick or something happened. Would you be surprised if your blood pressure went up? Nope, not at all. I would definitely expect it. Okay. So if something like that happens when you have this disease, would you be surprised if you gain some weight? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Marshall, you're, exactly what happened. you're hesitating. And that's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, I'm so, you know why? Is because in my, my head right now, I'm thinking of like all the things that I've learned, you know, in the last four years. And so my head is kind of spinning because I'm like, okay, so I got to think of this like a different way. Yeah. Because of course, you know, I've sat around beating myself up for the last year. And, right. you know, even though I know better, I think, so, you know, one of the pressures for me is that I, I do work at the clinic. And uh-huh. so I, I feel like I have this standard that, because, you know, mm. I always on, I was on like, you know, go on a, a downhill spiral, you know, way before I ever knew it. But, so, you know, yeah. somehow, you know, think things got, things got out of hand. And yeah. then I just lost the motivation, you know, like I just didn't, I didn't have the motivation to do it. And right. even though I wanted to, mm-hmm. I've just been I've just been really struggling since I went on that yeah. vacation last year. And yeah. I think for me personally, I think what happened was is that I got to a goal weight and I felt mm-hmm. really, really good. And mm-hmm. so my thought process was is that when I go on vacation, it's okay for me to eat or drink whatever I want because even if I gained some weight, I still have a little wiggle room, you know? And so I was just mm-hmm. focusing on on, you know, the scale so much at that yeah. time. And like yeah. I said, it was a, just a very dangerous place for me to be. It was that like this goal yeah. weight that I put on yeah. myself. And yeah. instead of thinking of this as like something that I'm doing for my health, I looked at it in numbers. I mean, it's just, it was just a fatal mistake. I mean, I, you, you live and learn. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that I just, I learned a hard lesson on focusing on the scale too much, mm-hmm. hitting that goal weight, then I started yeah. bargaining with myself, you know, like, oh, it's yeah. okay to, to eat those donuts because, you know, it's you can do whatever you want. And and that just easily got out of control. And it is so easy to get hooked back on sugar again. Just saying mm-hmm. to everybody, stay yeah. away from it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's what I want all of us to understand. Like, this is not about the scale. This is about keeping a chronic disease under control. Okay. And Once you have obesity, you always have obesity. It's not going to go away. The only question is, is it under control or is it not under control? This is why it just absolutely breaks my heart when I see little kids who are struggling with this disease at such young ages. I was just at a restaurant just tonight and I saw uh, she couldn't have been more than six or seven and she's already got obesity. And I'm just thinking to myself, oh, this poor kid, you know, she's going to be diabetic by the time she's 20. You know, so I see it too. I see it all the time. Oh, it's really hard. Yeah. Yep. The other thing that I want everyone to know is that when we define obesity by body mass index, which is basically how much do you weigh compared to how tall you are, and we say a BMI of 30 or above is obesity, but 25 to 28 is not really obesity yet. It's sort of like overweight. Um, I have colleagues who are saying we need to call it (laughs) pre-obesity, but (laughs) <laughs> the truth is that oh when your metabolism has shifted enough that you're starting to put on weight, what that means is that the metabolism is not functioning normally anymore. The insulin levels are running high. The body's metabolism is now ill. And um, it's only a matter of time until more and more weight gets put on. So think about it like that. Okay. So 
in order to get obesity under control, it requires a very sound nutrition plan. And most people benefit from anti-obesity medications. And I'm planning to do another podcast on medications soon. So I'm not going to go into the medications right now. But what I want all of us to understand is that whatever we are doing to keep obesity under control, including specific nutritional interventions and medications, and you might have an exercise plan, you might not, the nutrition and the medication are the most important pieces, we have to keep doing it or it's going to go out of control, okay? Just like high blood pressure. If you stop taking your blood pressure medications, your blood pressure is going to go out of control. No surprise there, right? So if you stop doing the nutrition and the medications and and the other things that help to keep obesity under control, you shouldn't be surprised if obesity gets out of control again. Now, should you blame yourself about this? Absolutely not, okay? Because that's not what the diet industry has taught us, is it? (laughs) Think about it. No, not at all. And yeah, and it's just so easy to do because you think that you have control. And that right. it's a battle, it's it's a willpower, and it really just mm-hmm. doesn't have anything to do with that. Yeah. So, yeah it's, yeah, it's easy to do. Like, you know, sit around and, you know, if you sit around blaming yourself, though, you're just wasting time on, you know, trying to get this under control. That's what that's what I'm starting to to realize. Yeah. Is that, um, yeah. I just you just got to do it. So say that again with more purpose. If you sit around beating yourself up, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're wasting time because you could you're be just. Time. Spending time on getting this under control. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. <laughs> okay. All hey, right. You so, want me to say it again for the people in the back? <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> so the diet, is, the diet industry teaches us that we ha- all we have to do is deprive ourselves, right? Three months of deprivation, maybe six months, maybe a year. We just deprive ourselves and we join a gym and we burn off some calories and we build up some muscle mass and then the problem is solved. How many times have you heard that? I so think like that. I see. I've mm-hmm. been. I think like that mm-hmm. all the time. Like, oh, by they teach the next you that three months. Once, yeah. yeah, and they teach you that once you've lost the weight, you can just stop doing all the things that you were doing and go back to eating your favorite foods in moderation, and everything's going to be fine. Yep, that's that, what I thought. That's what we all think after listening to those crazy people. So, how often is everything fine when we go back to eating our favorite foods in moderation? Huh. <laughs> Most people have no idea how to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's not fine because, because if you're like me and you're addicted no. to sugar and flour, then yeah. you can't do you just can't do it in moderation. I mean, I I've tried this. I've tried this. Yeah. Yeah. It's and not possible. It didn't it does yeah. not work for me. Yep. Mm-mm. Most people have no idea how to do moderation. And all they know how to do is to either diet or eat quote unquote, eat whatever I want, right? So Of course, the disease comes back, and then it comes back quickly, and we're left feeling like failures. Am I right? It's just, it's awful. Man, and it's like, it does really happen so fast. (laughs) You know, so it's like, you have to really, really be aware. I mean, like I said, that slippery slope is when you reach a goal, Mm -hmm. and you're starting Mm -hmm. to feel comfortable. And I've just, you know, I've just learned a whole lot about my, you know, the way I think um, Mm -hmm. in the last year, you know, and it's, it's, it was all fun and games, you know, until... I just started thinking a different way and yeah. allowing myself to do things that I knew I wasn't supposed to be doing, you know, and I try to do the whole moderation thing and, you know, and yeah. I, it's okay if I just gain a little bit cause I can get it right back up. And then, and then, and if, you know, if we want to talk pounds, you know, 17 pounds later, which happened so quickly. And, and then I just sat around beating myself up about it. And I'm like, uh-huh. you know, I should know better than this. And, and, and uh-huh. I just sat in this mind space of, you know, trying to figure it all out instead of just focusing on getting back into the swing of things and and eating mm-hmm. healthy and you know feeding my body good food because you know also along with this when you relapse you know your body feels like shit because yes. you start you know because obesity is a disease of inflammation so I mean it can mm-hmm. present itself in a lot of ways so right. my knees started hurting again I used to not wake up you know I'm not sure if anybody else that's listening at does this um when you first wake up and you feel stiff and you, you know, and you're achy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went back to feeling that way and, and now Mm -hmm. it feels like a normal feeling. Like it's, I'm comfortable with it because now it's been, you know, a year. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so it's, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bad disease. It just is. Yes, it is. So that's what the hell happened is 
one of the things that happened is that the chronic progressive disease of obesity has come back. The next thing that I want all of us to understand is that we live in a society where our social norms around food have been dictated by the food and beverage industry. And we've been socialized to eat highly processed foods like burgers and fries and pizza and spaghetti and garlic bread and muffins and donuts and cookies and cakes. And we've been socialized to drink coffee drinks and energy drinks. And all of these things that we think are normal, quote unquote, normal, are highly engineered, toxic, addictive food and beverage products. They're not food. (laughs) Okay. And they've been purposefully made to be very, very pleasurable and very convenient. Heck, you can now just get on your DoorDash app and have Dairy Queen delivered to you in 15 minutes. You don't even need to leave your house. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I don't live in a town that has Dory. I would, be, I'd be in so much trouble. <laughs> oh, because yeah, I, mean, I mean, I live in a little town that does not have the delivery service to your door. I mean, groceries for sure, but not like the fast food restaurants and stuff. Because I, the, I could Lucky see myself you. going down, yeah, yeah, going down that that rabbit yeah. hole. And so, yeah, that's yep. just another, yeah, just another convenient way for mm-hmm. you know these fast food restaurants to get their food to your your door. Yeah. So the second thing that I want all of us to understand is that our social norms are against us keeping this disease under control. They're working against us. So it takes work to eat wholesome, nourishing food. It takes planning and it takes grocery shopping and it takes a willingness to chop vegetables and prepare protein. And most of us still do not understand at all what it means to cook and prepare real food. And we reserve this for special occasions and not as a daily routine. So we may be willing to do the work for a little while to lose weight, right? But are we willing to do it later to keep the weight off? What if the scale's not moving anymore? Are we still willing to chop vegetables and sear protein and plan our meals in advance? Are we willing to go to a restaurant and eat real food and not entertain ourselves with food? Are we willing to do something different than almost everyone else in order to keep this disease under control? So those are the kinds of things that it takes to keep this disease under control when you live in our society. And so I just want all of us to understand how difficult this is. This is hard work. And especially in the beginning, it's super hard work. And so if something happens in our life, like our mother dies, or we get injured, or we have to have surgery, or we go on vacation, or we just forget, or we just don't really understand all the social norms we're up against, it's really, really, really easy for this disease to get out of control. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. That's, yeah, it's a struggle. Yeah. But I'm so glad we did a podcast about this because I'm starting to feel inspired, like probably I haven't felt in a while. Yay. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. our listeners are too. <laughs> our listeners yeah. who are struggling. This is really good information. I mean, this is, this yeah. is, this right yeah. here is golden. Yes. Yeah. Well, here's one more thing that happens for people. Most of us have some sort of emotional relationship with food. We actually did a whole podcast on this subject a few months ago, our emotional relationship with food. So what happens for us is that we're using food to manage our emotions or to create pleasurable emotional states for ourselves. So we're using food in a couple of different ways. We're using it to help negate negative emotions, which is called buffering. But then we're also using it to create positive emotion. Okay. So processed food is a drug. The sugar and flour that are contained in processed food stimulates the release of dopamine and serotonin, which bring pleasure and comfort. So when we feel sad, food's going to comfort us. And if we're bored, food will entertain us. If we want to celebrate, food will help us celebrate. And we were taught from a very young age to use food to soothe in times of emotional distress. And we're encouraged by our society at every turn to use food for emotional reasons. Even at work, if somebody has a birthday, most workplaces celebrate with food not recognizing that it's not so much the food that brings the celebration, it's the coming together with the specific purpose of honoring the birthday person that brings the sense of celebration. But of course, the cupcakes are going to cause a release of the pleasure chemicals that add to that sense of celebration. So 
Again, we don't want to blame ourselves or shame ourselves if we find that we're using food for emotional reasons. We've learned how to do it from a very young age. We've been taught this, and it's a strong cultural habit. But what we do want to do is to recognize it and to recognize that this can be the cause of slips. This can be why it makes it seem so hard to lose weight and keep it off. If we don't find new ways of managing our emotions without food or alcohol, and if we don't find new ways of celebrating, we're going to go back to our old patterns. Okay? So this is why I always say, and I say it over and over again, the weight loss journey done well is a journey of profound personal evolution. You can't just go on a diet. Most people slip up and gain all their weight back because they don't understand all of the obstacles that are in their way. They don't understand that they have a disease, a disease that is chronic and progressive and relapsing, and it takes vigilance to keep under control. They think they can just go on a diet. They don't understand the importance of developing new nutritional habits, of learning how to chop vegetables and cook real food on a regular basis. They don't understand that they'll need to be eating differently than almost everyone around them, and that they'll want to develop the identity of someone who's not going to go along with everyone else just to go along. And they have no idea how to manage their emotions without the dopamine hit that comes from eating processed food. So is any of this your fault? No, none of it's your fault. Weight Watchers doesn't teach you this. South Beach doesn't teach you this. Dietitians don't teach you this. Almost nobody teaches you this stuff. So what are you going to do when you find yourself having gained some or all of your weight back and you're asking yourself, how in the hell did this happen? Well, the first thing is, and Marcelle, I think you're pretty good at this, is you be kind and gentle with yourself. Really kind and really gentle. And you get help. <laughs> you get help. That's the most important thing is to stay connected to a community. Ask, yes. yeah, ask for help. Ask for help. Yeah. You recognize that it's nearly impossible to do this on your own because the whole world is against you, basically, and you need help and you need support. If you're struggling and asking yourself, how the hell did this happen? I would encourage you to join us in Empowered Weight Loss because I can empower you to do what needs to be done to get this disease under control and keep it under control. Not perfectly, but good enough good enough so that you can maintain your weight loss and live a longer, happier, healthier life. You don't have to do it perfectly. You just want to do it decently. <laughs> and you need to know how to get yourself back on track quickly because you are going to slip up. Everybody does. Every chronic disease has relapses. The question isn't, are you going to gain some weight back? The question is, what are you going to do when you do gain some weight back and how quickly are you going to get yourself back on track? So I would encourage you to join us Empowered Weight Loss starts with the Done With Dieting Boot Camps. You just go to journeybeyondweightloss.com and you just look for the Done With Dieting Boot Camp and you can sign up and I will teach you in the boot camp. I'll teach you how to reset your metabolism in 30 days. You can get your metabolism back on track and then hang out with us in Empowered Weight Loss and I will teach you everything you need to know to get this disease under control and keep it under control. We've got an awesome supportive community. Cool, huh? Yes, this is awesome. You guys, the boot camp is amazing. And the Empowered Weight Loss, I'm just the whole program is amazing. And yeah. Um, yeah. and you have to keep doing it. You have to keep it at the forefront of your mind. Because, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, I mean, I, I work I work at the clinic. I'm there every day, you know, yeah. and I still somehow- It can happen to Marshall. It can happen yeah, to anybody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you know? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I so, thought I was cured. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never cured. Uh, so no, um, I'm really proud of the boot camp because I am teaching you in this boot camp. I'm teaching things that most healthcare professionals don't even know. And then in empowered weight loss, I am teaching you all kinds of awesome stuff about the science and the psychology. And we're going deeper into all of these subjects that we talk about on the podcast. So it's great. It's so much fun. So if you're interested in joining us, please do so. And we'll look forward to seeing you. Do you have any last minute comments or questions, Marcel? Nope. Um, just, you know, I hope that everybody that I hope everybody hears this podcast that, that needs it. Yes. Yes. So I just, I'll just um, remind you, 
what the hell happened. Three things that I talked about just very briefly. The first thing is what the hell happened is you have a disease and it got out of control. The second thing that happened is you didn't understand that our society is not helpful and that it takes a lot of extra support in order to keep this disease under control because everything about the way we live our lives in our Western culture is going to thwart your attempts to stay healthy at every moment. As a matter of fact, it takes a lot of work to be a healthy person when you live in the Western world these days. And then the third thing that happened was you have yet to learn, might, it possibly might need to learn how to manage your emotions without food or alcohol. And that is a huge skill in and of itself. It's called learning how to stop buffering. And we work on that um, very specifically in Empowered Weight Loss. So okie doke. So those are the three things that happens when you ask yourself, what the hell happened? <laughs> we'll see you guys <laughs> next week, okay? Have a great week, everyone, and take good care of yourselves. Bye. All right, goodbye, everybody. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.